check out the Mail Advantage paperback, ebook, and audiobook using the links below. Okay guys, welcome back to another video. In this video we're going to be analysing the male advantage journey of Drake. Uh, this has been requested by a lot of people and it's a journey that I really wanted to do because with these male advantage journeys I always like to do something different and find somebody who's taken a different path to get to the top. Now, one thing that's worth mentioning with this journey is I'm not look, I'm not telling you guys to be Drake. I'm not telling you guys that you can go on the same journey. If you can't sing or rap, then you're kind of fucked if you're trying to follow what he's done, okay? You can do it in a different manner, but it would just be silly for me to say, hey, look, Drake's done it, you can do it too. Um, but the important thing to look at when it comes to Drake is the way that he built his hyper-masculine character. Okay, and this is why I really want to do this video, because it, outlined, it outlines life setup and something that I call framing, and I'm going to do a whole video on life setup versus framing very soon for you guys. I need to describe something. I've kind of realized that there's like a distinct difference between the two. Um, but Drake had some early success in his life. He probably by like 21, 22, 23 years old, multi-millionaire, millions in the bank, getting girls, etc. But Drake needed to transform. He found that in himself. He decided that he needed to be different. He needed to transform. He needed to do something different. And that's when he decided to build his hyper-masculine character and make a whole bunch of changes. And that's why I think this video is so important because it really outlines to you guys. Obviously not on the same scale. This guy's rich as hell. But it does show you guys the sort of things that you need to be doing to create a higher level version of yourself because for Drake to already be a millionaire who's successful, who's getting girls, who's got fame, who's got a great life, you know, and all this shit, for him to be like, I need to make changes, I need to improve the brand for longevity purposes, I need to improve who I am, you know, that says something, okay, guys? So, we're just, because it's not really relevant to the video, I'm just going to brush through the early life just so you can see a slight struggle, okay? Um, uh, in the early days, Drake was on a program, a TV show called Degrassi. He was in a group called the Renaissance Group. It was just like four of them. They were almost like a, a beta version of the Black Eyed Peas. It was, it was pretty shit. And they all went their own ways, you know, eventually in the future and did solo careers. Um, I've got pictures on this screen as well of him when he was tap dancing back in the day when he was a young kid. I mean, the thing you have to realize about Drake early on, and I've written it down here as well, like it says he was tap dancing, he was bullied as a kid, which obviously is, you know, terrible for any kids, and it's not something I advocate. Uh, and the third thing on here was he was doing a lot of, like, comedy sketches, you know, and you see this a lot with, like, Jamie Foxx in the early days, he was, like, a comedy guy, then he transforms to serious movies and, like, really improves his brand and the masculinity of who he is, and Drake was no different, he was doing the same thing. And I think it's really important that we see what type of guy Drake was in the early days. Because a lot of people will, you know, whoever you are, people will see you as who you are right now. They won't care who you used to be, okay? Like, we see this all the time. Like, how many women get plastic surgery and nobody cares? Everyone's just like, oh, I love her body. She looks great. It's like, she doesn't look like that. She doesn't look one bit like that. She's had 400,000 pumped into her body. But nobody gives a shit. People all, people just care about who you are right now. And that goes for both sides of the coin, okay? So there's guys out there that are like, when I was young, I used to get so many girls. Like, nobody cares. Like, you're not the man anymore. Nobody gives a shit. And all that really matters is the current time, okay? So if you were this... Obviously, that's not his real ears. Obviously, he's wearing, like, elf ears. But if you were this tap-dancing black Jewish kid that was getting bullied straight out of, he was living in Canada, which wasn't like, you know, by the Americans wasn't considered great, who were like dominating hip hop at the time. And you're doing like comedy sketches and you're considered like this corny, as people said, like a corny light skin guy. And he's got all these labels attached to him, whatever. And Drake can become what he is today, which is like, he's, he's the fucking main guy. Do you know what I mean? If, if we were actually to talk about alphas and whatever, like he's at the top of the tree, you know, I'm not saying that he could beat anybody up and all that bollocks, but like when he walks in a room, he's the most important guy in that room. And for him to start off as we're seeing on screen now, dressed up as some Bilbo Baggins looking shit is 
pretty crazy, okay? Like, anybody can make this transformation. And I could show this picture, and I could try and shame Drake on, like, obviously I wouldn't do that. But, like, somebody could put that out and try and shame Drake and be like, look who he used to be, or he was soft, you know, these are all the labels people used to use. Nobody's going to care. Look who he is today. Look what look what he's created him for himself. Look at his life setup. Look how he's framed himself to the, to become this hyper masculine character. And that's all people give a fuck about. In uh, you know when when all is said and done. So secondly, I want to talk about he he made about six thousand sales of his first mixtape. You know, not too good, but not too bad to be honest. Gave him a little bit of spare money. Um, and this is the stick or twist moment, and we see this in every male life, okay? And I, I didn't realize until recently in my own life, but there's multiple stick or twist moments, like major stick or twist ones. And this was probably the first big one for him. And he ended his relationship with the woman that he was with at the time, and then decided to leave his acting job. Now, for him to be to leave his acting job, he was on Degrassi for like six or eight years or something crazy, and he was making very good money. He had a decent career there. People would have been like, you're a fool to leave, you know? But he just realized he wanted something else. So he ends a relationship, leaves his acting job, and self-funds his second mixtape. Now, that's a big bollocks move, okay? I, I really respect that from Drake. That's, um, you know, that, that was a game changer for him. And... During one of his first songs, Replacement Girl, one of his first big songs, um, he met Forty whilst filming the music video with Trey Songs. And Forty is uh, Noah, I believe. And he was here, he's his producer to this day. He's just kind of found Drake's, let's say, tonality on songs. He's found his beats, like he's found his voice. He's, he's like kind of tapped into like what suits Drake best. Okay, what key this song should be in. Like, match it up to Drake. Okay, this is a Drake-type beat. You know, you hear that shit all the time. Forty was the guy that really put all that together, okay, and sort of, like, created the Drake sound, which was cool. Now, it wasn't until Best I Ever Had where people was, like, taking Drake seriously because, as I said earlier, as I'll bring up on screen now, Drake was really considered as, like, the corny light-skinned guy look he's here he's wearing like the jumper you know they're like the knitted cardigan he's he just kind of he looks like the guy like everybody always describes in memes that's always asking girls like where's my hug like he, he's the epitome of that okay and do you know what's crazy is like drake right now would outrank 99.999 percent of men on planet earth okay like, he might outrank everybody in terms of, like, having the money, the youth, the the uh, the life set up and kind of the reputation that he's got in the industry that he's in. He might, uh, he might outrank everybody, okay? But at this stage in his life, and I assume he was probably, like, 18, 19 years old here, probably, like, 60% of us would outrank him. You know, obviously, he probably had a bit more money than the average person because he was doing acting. But in terms of just appearance and who he is and his persona and let's let's say if the average guy on the street and him were like approaching women you know just based on the look that he's got here just like how corny he is and how skinny he looks like jawline's not there at all like it's just it's just a thin face you know what i mean it's very adolescent you know most of the average person would probably outrank him it's just the the work that he's put in and the way that he's built up multiple areas of his life and like I've said to you guys before, the aggregation of marginal gains is why Drake is where he is today. And fair play to the guy, because he's worked his balls off. But best I ever had was like the first moment, I think, where Drake really burst on the scene. And as we can see on screen, like he was he was putting something together. He was becoming a much better looking man, I think. That's the best he's ever looked. I think they obviously did some work on him for the for the cover art, but you know, he's far better than what he was before. And I think he didn't actually maintain this. I think he got a little bit puffy and whatever. But just for that cover, that cover shoot, he looks pretty decent. But after that, I think he had some... I think he had some down years in terms of appearance. You know how I did that Justin Bieber one before and I said Bieber needs to transition now? Well, I think he got, he got, he got to a point, Drake, where... You know, things had gone well, and he kind of let himself go, and he was going out, getting drunk. Um, I, I remember people, I remember he said uh, that he was sleeping with girls in, like, dorm rooms, in, like, college dorm rooms, just waking up in the morning, just, like, making his way back to his house, just, like, but getting one of his friends to come pick him up. 
it's just not a good quality of life okay and he's definitely changed that at this uh, like at the age he is now at 35 years old but back then you know and we've all made this mistake you almost think that you can rely on that like youthful appearance you know you're young you're good looking you're in shape naturally like it's very easy to do but as soon as you lo as soon as you enter your 20s and you start slacking off and you start going out drinking eating shit food it's around about 23 24 25 years old it catches up on you you start to look like shit and it's like the first stage where a man realizes actually I need to work on this. You know, anything above like 16% body fat just makes you look really terrible. So I think, you know, this was a this was a learning curve to, for Drake at that point. And this is where we get Transformation 1, in my opinion. Transformation 1 was like harder music. Okay, so it was very, it was like the Trey Songs era where it was all about love songs for girls. And I know Drake's spoken about how he didn't mind that. He thought that was like a real good thing to do because getting girls was obviously like... You know, it's, it's something that all men want to do, so he probably didn't see it as a problem, but you can see that he, like, changed who he was. He changed his image, and, you know, we've, we've all done this, guys. Like, when we were really young, we were probably corny. We thought something was cool. Like, how many guys are trying to act a certain way and, like, pop dance moves? Like, they think everything is... Uh, they think everything is like a movie scene. Do you know what I mean? They're trying to go over the top with everything. Um... You know, everyone thinks they're in Step Up or something like that when they're in a club. And then as you get older, you're just like, what the fuck? I cringe at about 99% of stuff I did before the age of 18. I think I think is absolutely wildly embarrassing. So, you know, everybody's had those moments. But Drake started making songs like Stay Scheming, Aston Martin Music, uh, Money to Blow, Right Above It, Miss Me, I'm On One. I remember at that point, I remember I was in... Um, I was in, where was I? I am Napa, I think. And I, I'm on one, just came out. And I remember, and Stay Scheming was around about that time too. And Drake was like starting to come on the map. Like people were like, God, this guy is, you know, he's actually making hits now. It's not just corny, it's not like corny Trey Songs type songs. I don't have a problem with Trey Songs, but you know, it's, I think his, his era is gone in that sense. Um, and Drake was like started to make proper bangers, you know, whether he was featuring on a song or whatever He was being considered as a proper artist and I think those corny labels were disappearing and a lot more men were respecting him It wasn't just women, you know, it was like it went through that like Chris Brown transition where Chris Brown was singing like with you and then it became You know a lot more gangster if you would um, I remember a friend of mine as well gave me some advice when I was younger and he said uh, that he I told you guys this before he was going to university and he was sat there like a day before he went or I can't remember he was at the place already and people hadn't arrived I remember he was thinking he said to me he was thinking like who am I going to be like are people going to respect me people going to like me like uh, have I got to like act a certain way and then he kind of came to the revelation he was like wait nobody knows me I can be I can be whoever the fuck I want to be, like I can frame myself in a certain way, and people would never know. Like I can be the confident guy, who when you walk through the door looks you straight in the eye and shakes your hands, and I can just start fresh. Like that's me now. That's who I'm going to be, and I just thought that was really cool advice. And I was th I was thinking that's something that Drake did. Like he went from I'm that corny like doing comedy sketches guy, you know, making songs for women to I'm just going to transition and the world is just going to follow me, and he did this multiple times in his career and I I really respect that and I think it's something that you guys can do anytime you want. You can just say okay I'm going to be a different person now. The the old me's dead. I'm just going to create a character. I'm going to create my hyper masculine character. This is who I've always wanted to be. I'm I'm going to be doing this myself in like the next six months or so, and just putting together exactly who I've always wanted to be step by step. Um, you know because once you get a bit of money, once you get to a certain stage in life, you know you've figured out what you've wanted. You've you've almost created your own identity. You know it's possible at that point. Now transformation two for me came from when he when Drake became more image conscious and you know the harder music I imagine came from ghostwriters because he didn't really have that background. He'd go down to like Memphis with his dad and obviously it's a tougher area. I think he had to employ a ghostwriter. I don't really see a problem with it. I think it was actually a good idea because it you know it it framed who he was and it made the you know the lyrics were hard for him to write if he hasn't lived that life. Now at this point we see Drake really pushing for more online duality. He started to post more on socials, he started to become more aware of social channels and kind of 
putting his life out in the public eye and making himself look as good as possible, photo shoots, uh, video shoots, we all remember that like short video that he did, I can't remember, it was like a, sh it was like a very, very short, almost like a feature or like a short movie and it had, uh, I think this was for, it was for that album that had jungle on it i can't remember i can't remember the you can search the video anyway i think it might have been called drake jungle short film or something like that i can't remember now but he did that and he was using like better camera equipment like making himself look better in every moment so he became way more image conscious especially in online duality sense um this was the stage where the beard and the skin got good. I think everybody remembers this, where he just transformed overnight, okay? Like, instead of instead of being, like, an awkward-looking guy, he just started to look more masculine pretty much overnight. Um, he grew the beards, and it just created this... It created this character that we knew as Drake, okay? Like, the shaved head with the beards, um, the good skin, whatever. It just became synonymous with him, and I just think that's something that he started to really focus on. His clothes got better. I think he really improved that. Um, obviously, the haircuts, he started to worry more about the way he looked. Before, he had, like, mad professor-type hair. He didn't really care. It was like it was a proper Jewish haircut. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but it was a proper Jewish haircut, which didn't really suit his industry. And um, you know, he went for like short back and sides, and started going for fades and stuff like that. And I think it just really framed his image, brought it, brought everything together. Like I said, higher video quality. There's less monotone beats because back in the day, he was using something that you'd hear on like a Nokia, and I just don't think it matched his voice very well. I think the equipment he was using didn't match his voice very well. Because uh, he's got quite a deep voice and I just don't think you could really hear that. I think it sounded a lot more whiny when he was younger. And with the better, better equipment, better video quality, less monotone beats, I think he, he really spent a lot of money on that and brought everything together, in, in my opinion. And like I said, every man does this. They go from corny to like more business-minded, more masculine. You just want different shit as you get older, guys. And that like flicky Justin Bieber hair or, you know looking like a good boy or like dressing like a choir boy and we got many pictures on here of Drake wearing like for example the one I'm looking at here in a blue jumper with the white collared shirt like that's just I mean that was a that was a Kanye West look that's what he wanted you know we always said polos and backpacks and stuff like that uh, everybody was following that look but Drake like soon fans more of like a masculine vibe the same's happened with Kanye like he's gone into fashion like his whole his whole style now is like Paris Fashion Week kind of centric and I think Drake's very very much like followed the same cue and at this time as well you can see this in his music he was releasing songs like the motto hell yeah fucking right worst behavior over underground kings like it was a lot harder okay it was more i think there was more men gravitating towards his music at that point he became more respected like i definitely took note of drake at that point like best i ever had i really liked and then you know a couple of these features like stay scheming uh i'm on one but i wasn't really like a big fan i wasn't really following him but as soon as he started to release songs like underground kings and worst behavior and over i was like okay this guy's really good you know this is something you can vibe to this is something i can feel is like more masculine okay he's not like made these beats for women and this just kind of like brought his whole image together because you know, like, female music is loved by females. Male music is loved by men and women. And I think he realised that, that he could, like, capture both audiences. And if if you're, like, the main guy, and, like, look at 50 Cent, for example. How many women love his music? It's definitely made for men, but how many women love his music? Same with the game, like, there's just, uh, like, Pop Smoke. Like, how many women love Pop Smoke? And you think his music is definitely made for men, but women love it. You might as well just tap into like the combined audiences. So the third transformation for me, transformation three, was serious money. Okay, so after Drake was dropping these bangers one after the other, he just had serious money coming in. And you could see this in terms of his life setup and his framing, okay? Like we've got pictures of um, like his security. He's surrounded by top level women at the time. He starts dating like much higher level women. Um, this like dating higher level women will get your reputation up as well. Like guys, if you're if you're surrounded if you're surrounded by beautiful women, um, women that everyone else wants to fuck, then look, you're going to be the man immediately. It's so easy. 
You can see that Drake added in like videographers because his life started to get documented. Uh, he, probably a social media team because his pictures were just like 4K and stuff. Uh, you know, you can see multiple multiple videos, multiple clips where he's like rolling around in the back of a Rolls Royce with a driver. Like it's more corporate shit. It's like I'm a boss now. I'm not just making money, I'm a boss. I've got boss level money, somebody drives me around. I've got teams of people, I've got security. You know, and stuff like, he started to tap into like pop culture. So those lyrics where he talks about the neighbors complained about the noise so I bought their house. Like, it's little things like that. They just they just go down in history and people remember them and it almost creates like this image. It almost creates this like aura of invincibility around the person and these little stories work really well. And that's when like we got hit by Hotline Bling and I think that's when he became like the biggest artist in the in his genre, may, maybe in the world, probably, I mean that's tough with like, um, you know, Ed Sheeran and people like that at the time and you had Adele, like it's, you know, Beyonce and whatever, like it's tough to claim that, but I think at Hotline Bling time he's probably like the hottest artist in the world at, the, at that moment. But we can even see here, like if I bring up the picture on screen, like the two pictures, the difference in his security as well, like this guy was upgrading everything. Like his security just went from two steroid guys to guys dressed in proper security outfits, like matching, matching the kind of brand. And then also having like earpieces in, like everything just became more professional. He's just like upping everything. And like I said, he started moving like a boss. And as you get older, this is what every guy goes through. Like I said, in the early days, the corny guy, you know, flashing a nice smile at everybody, like wanting to be like the Prince Charming, the pretty boy. And then we all get to a certain age where we're like, I'm going to grow a beard. I'm going to shave my hair. I'm going to get in the gym and get jacked. I'm going to start flooding money into this new business idea. I'm going to buy an office. I'm going to start moving like the president. Like, every guy just does this. I don't know what it is. It's like an itch that we can't scratch. I'm, I'm in this position right now. I was talking to Hamza the other day about this. I was like, I'm, just, I'm at an age where there's just something inside of me that's just like, you should be, you know, making high-level men's fashion. You should be at Paris Fashion Week. You should be in boardrooms shaking hands, wrapping up deals. Like, you should be... You should be like the boss in every department of your life. Like, it's just, I don't know what it is. We just develop this urge to just take over. It's very, very weird. I think it kicks in at like 26, 27 years old. And at the age I am now, 29, like it's, it's really, really intense. And I think in my 30s and 40s, it's only going to become more drastic. And you can see this in Drake's life too. Now, Transformation 4 is maybe the most important one of his career. Drake decided to take a break, okay, and he went through a body transformation. And this body transformation just brought everything together together for me because he was looking better and his life setup was better and things were being put in place, but he was always quite puffy. I always thought he had a very puffy face. He was kind of in shape, out of shape. And I, I imagine he took steroids, you know, some level of testosterone. Why would you not if you got that much money? And it was almost like overnight, he just had this thicker neck, you know, the face was wider, he just looked jacked, he was pretty shredded all at once. And this picture's a very good one. Like, you see the difference between, like, the width in his face. That's why I think, you know, obviously it's the beard too. But that's why I think there was some testosterone or HGH involved, you know, just for a short amount of time. Blood work was monitored and all that stuff. But it's all part of the journey either way, guys. You know, if he's got that much money and he can monitor it and it's safe, then, you know, who cares? It's all part of the brand, really. So, you know... I don't think Drake is considered like some big, strong, tough, masculine guy today, but it's definitely a million miles away from who he used to be, okay? Like, that skinny, like I said, corny, and as people say, you know, because I, I feel like it might be a touch of racism if I'm saying this, but the skinny, corny, like, light-skinned guy that everybody used to take the piss out of and say that he was soft and he made music for women and he was corny and all this stuff... You know, we just don't have that today. Like, you look at this guy here, it's a million miles away from what we had before. And it's a step-by-step -step process. Like, he's worked on every single area of his of his life. And he's really made a conscious effort to become that hyper-masculine character. And with the money that he's got, the frame that he's built, like, the clothes, the look, the beard, the skin, like, everything. He's really put some stuff in place. And... Like, he's not hes not a handsome guy at all. Like, he hasn't got a decent jawline. We know that from... There's that album cover where he's side on. Like, his jawline is really, really bad. Uh, and there's multiple pictures that show this. I'll show them on screen. And also, you see he's got, like, really, really low cheekbones. Like, he hasn't got an attract... Like, that much of an attractive face. 
so there's so many guys that could reach his level, but what he's done is he's made the best of himself. Okay, he could get in way better shape. I'd I'd love to spend like a day with him and give him like natural diuretics and show him like how to actually cut down to like 10% body fat, make him look way better. I think you know, but at the end of the day, if you're that rich, he's usually when guys aren't in amazing shape, they're getting women in the shape that they're in already, so they don't really care. Yeah, that's that's the theory that I've had. So, like they're too successful and they're attracting women. They don't give a shit. Okay, that's kind of the point that I've that I've like deemed from. And I think Drake's done enough. Do you know what I mean, guys? Like with the money he's got, the frame that he's got, like he's done enough. Like he doesn't have to take it into overdrive. Like he can enjoy his life, have a few drinks, whatever, and still like have a great time. Probably just take some testosterone, and you know his life's fucking fantastic. So fair play to the guy. But at this point as well, he started to add more like masculine kind of boss level features, like life setup features. And like I said, the security went up. He's more masculine looking. He added a plane, which he didn't actually buy. I mean, the the airline, Canadian airline gave him a plane, which is like, you know, it, it, is a, it was apparently it was a great advertising move for them. It was great commercially for them. Um, but he gets given a plane and that's like, like I said, guys go from oh my god, I can't wait to get those new sneakers to I'm going to get my own plane, a Rolls Royce and a yacht cause, and a holiday home. Do you know what I mean? Like We're not all going to ever get to that level, but the things that we want go up in level. And that's, you know, with Drake's money and his success, you can see that level of progression. His house, which I'll bring up on screen, which is one of the most ridiculous homes I've ever seen, it's got a bar in it, and we can see in... Um, the song that was eye-opening for me was the Chicago Freestyle, the second half of that video when he's in his house and he's got the bar and everybody's at his house like and he's kind of partying and then he goes into like his safe and he's counting the money and it's just like he is he's really framing this like he's trying so hard to be that like boss level alpha male hyper masculine character it's all part of the brands like he said in one of his songs bury me with a tan when you bury me i better have a tan or something because it's all it's all part of the brand I really get that with Drake. Like, everything he does is a deliberate move. And this is something that you guys can do in your own lives, okay? Like, if, like, I, I, I don't think it's the worst idea in the world in this generation to make a ton of money, go and hire a videographer or a photographer and go and get a bunch of fucking pictures taken of you looking like a boss and, like, framing your lifestyle. I, I, I think this sort of stuff, like, in terms of life setup works so well. And I think this is what Drake is a master at. And he's definitely, like, that's why I mentioned that break on Trans Transformation 4. He's definitely sat down with his team at some point and been like, we need to add this sort of thing to our lives. Like, we need to start you know, making me that alpha male character so that men respect me, so that women find me way more attractive. Like, I need to keep evolving with the times, you know, and fair play to him because his online duality and his life setup and his framing is just, like, top, top level, okay? We can also see that he started dressing in, like, a lot more, as I said earlier, Paris Fashion Week type of style. Like, it went from the polo shirts and the knitted jumpers to, like... Everything is a high level brand. Everything is like a suit. Everything is tailored to fit. It's all tight fitted clothes. That really brought the look together. I think, you know, you'll occasionally see him rock around in a hoodie when he's traveling. But I think it's so important for men to do this. And Drake nailed this effect is just up, up, up your wardrobe game, you know, up your clothing game because people, people, people treat you differently and you look so much better. Like I'll dress up for a day go somewhere, feel like I look really good, get loads of attention, feel like the man, and then I'll come home, maybe just like throw on a t-shirt, maybe a hoodie, and you look in the mirror and you're like, I look like a completely different guy, I look like a child, and I, I just think it's important to spend some decent amount of money when you can on like your appearance in that sense, like skincare, grooming, hygiene, the correct clothes, you know, all this stuff just makes you look more expensive. You know, like if you were to buy a premium item off the shelf and you were to feel the fabric and you were to be like, oh, this feels cheap or this looks cheap. You know, people always say that it looks cheap. The same effect works with human beings, especially men. Like you can look cheap. Okay, for women it's different. If a woman looks cheap, guys are like, oh, I'm going to sleep with her. This is going to be good fun. Like it's, there's, there's almost like a, a sexy, tacky look that women can get away with, like a Barbie look. With men, it's like, unless you're, unless you're looking high level, you just look cheap. You just look broke. And I think it's definitely something that we need to pay attention to. Like, the touch of the, the feel of the fabrics, the look of the fabrics that we're wearing, the fit of the clothing that we're wearing. I think all these things are important. And Drake nailed this in this, like, transformation form. 
his footage became 4K, like it became so crisp, okay? And everything that he filmed, music videos, the shorts, the snippets, everything he's putting out, you know, like promotional videos, everything looked like a movie. And I think that's so important too. And in that Chicago freestyle, you can just see that, like, the way he moves, his body language, his persona, like, everything's completely different. The outfit that he's wearing in that Rolls Royce, like, it's a combination with Drake. And I've always said this, like, I, I, I always had, like, this vision when I was younger of, like, being in Paris in, in like, an uh, expensive car with my, like, songs playing that were, like, empowering for, for like, a man, you know, and dressed in like the perfect outfit and I look good I'm 10% body fat I look shredded I look at my best and then sat next to me as a perfect 10 like it was the combination of things that made it fun and I think in that Chicago freestyle like he sat in a Rolls Royce I'll bring the picture up now he's got like the masculine outfit on his skin looks good he's got the beard shaped up you know, he's like driving through the city, the music's playing, like it just looks cool. It brings everything together and he's like a master of putting all that shit together. The jacket actually that he's wearing, I'm actually I'm actually um, creating that right now. I've got a design for it, I've got, you know, something in mind. I want to make it tighter in the arms and sleeves, make it more, more of a slim fit, fitted look. But it's like a leather puffer jacket. It's, I looked for it everywhere, I couldn't find it, it's really rare. I imagine the one he's wearing is really expensive, so I'm going to create like an affordable one that will be ready around about September. Um, I think it'd be a really good look, okay, if I can pull this off, make it slightly more modern to go with the times for next year. I think that'll look really, really good, but you know, he's got the outfits and whatever. And to touch on the body language that I mentioned earlier, there's a scene in this Chicago freestyle where he looks over at the NBA player, I think it's Brooker, I think that's his name. And the old Drake was like, smiley. You know, I always told you guys, don't smile too much. When you smile a lot, you just you come across as weak. And the old Drake was like smiley and he'd like raise his hand up and wave and all this shit. In this video, he just raises his head and gives a wink. Like it's completely different as in like he's, his whole persona, his character has changed. And this is what happens when you change who you are in terms of building that hyper masculine character, you start getting different reactions off people and it almost creates like a different feedback loop. So you get a different reaction from women. You get a lot more attention from women. Other men start treating you with respect you start, you know, operating in different circles. The way you move around is different. Like everything about you starts to change. So it changes your brain. It changes the way you think. It changes the way you move. Testosterone might go up naturally. Like the chemicals in your body are just acting differently. You know, and you're just, your reactions to things are different because of that feedback loop, because of who you've become and who you've made yourself into and who you framed yourself as with your life set up to as that hyper-masculine character. The feedback you're getting is completely different, which changes you, okay? And you can see that. Now, yeah, it's a music video, whatever, and, you know, he could be faking that moment and whatnot, but it, at the same time, it does actually look pretty organic. It could have just been filmed on the fly, but at the same time, it's like the old Drake wouldn't have even thought about doing that. Like, everything is deliberate now. I just think when you see him talk in interviews, like, he's completely different to how he used to be. And I just think... You know, the people that he's mixing with and the way that he's framed himself and the reactions he's getting, the feedback loop, it's just changed him. He's not the same man he was back then. And this is why, you know, it, it drives me crazy when people say, oh, men peak at like 21, 22. Chris, you're crazy if you think a man's physical prime is in his... Th like, when I say a guy is in his prime from like 30 to 50, this is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about... You know, people say, oh yeah, but sports stars are younger. I'm not talking about sports stars because most of them look like shit. Take away the steroids and they'd look really, really bad. Okay, like the only reason a lot of them, like LeBron James without the steroids would just be a skinny tall guy. He'd look really awkward, like the old school NBA players, okay. With the steroids, they're able to maintain the muscle plus like the performance, okay. You can't do it any other way. You can't be muscular and perform. It's impossible. Mike Tyson was dosed up to the eyeballs. Like sports people look like shit unless they're on steroids. And even then they don't look that great. Like I think Cristiano Ronaldo just looks like some skinny guy. He's shredded. He looks pretty good, but... I'd say, like, Drake in this picture that we're looking at now looks ten times better than, like, the Ronaldo image that's, like, cast out into the worlds. And this is why I just think, you know, once once guys have been given time, you know, at 18 years old, we're skinny, we're spotty, we're awkward, we've not figured out our look yet, we're not, we've not figured out our hyper-masculine character, or we've not even figured out that we need to do that. 
We've not even figured out the benefits to our life of being a hyper, of, of building that hyper masculine character. And as we go through life, you know, let's say you you can even be like a young pretty boy at 21. Yeah, you might get some female attention, but it won't be top level. You know, like let's look at the dates that Drake has now. Like he did, he took that girl to like that stadium and rented it out for the day. Like, who's a girl going to go off with? Like, even if Drake wasn't famous, if he had the capabilities to, to do what he's doing, in terms of his framing, in terms of his life setup and everything that he's put together, and the man that he is as a complete package, why would a girl be like, yeah, but that guy over there is really handsome? Like, it doesn't. Do you know what I mean? Like, she doesn't, she's not going to see that as appealing. She might be like, oh, it's a one-night stand, but the guy that she actually wants to be with, and if it became a contest between the two, she's picking the Drake guy every single day of the week. And guys would respect the Drake guy more. You know, you're going to land more business deals because of who you are. Like, there's just so much more that happens. Like, I've, I've said in that video, and I've mentioned it a few times in the last month or so, the other side of male life. If you haven't watched it, go and watch it on my channel. It's called The Other Side of Male Life, Motivation in Brackets. It just shows you, like, what else is waiting for you as a man. Like, don't be that 18-year-old that's like... Like that 18 year old guy that's like, oh, we, we're going to go to the club tonight, get fucked up, pull girls. Like, there's another side of male life, which is, you know, and Drake talks about it in a. I watched one of his interviews today so that I can make this video. And he was talking about how he's in his new house and he's got balance now and he's getting up early and he's drinking like an espresso in the morning, whereas before it used to be like he's hungover. You know, I'm not saying espresso is good for you, but it's more it's more like a 40 year old man who works in finance, you know, in a business suit type of lifestyle. And as much as it's like cool when you're younger to like stay up late and, you know, rock around wearing hoodies and, you know, do drugs and whatever, as you get older and like Drake's at this point now where he's realized like, I want to go to bed early. I want to look good. I want to get up early. I want to I want to take girls on like high level dates. I want to go on like holidays where I don't drink. I just go to like train and get healthy and relax and go on like go to a spa and stuff like this. And I want to build businesses that are respectful and the music that I make, I want it to be respected in the industry and not just some like techy poppy beat, you know, like in the old days and I just think, I, I love what Drake's doing, I love what he's building, I've got a lot of respect for the guy, and I just think when any guy goes through this transformation, they should get a massive round of applause from everybody, and it's it's a shining light to all of us, okay? It's a massive shining light, like men do peak 30 to 50, like that is our prime years, like you can argue all you want, and you, you can be some 21 year old that's like, yeah, but the guys at my school, fuck your school, Fuck your college or university or that shit. It's the real world that matters. That's the majority of your life. And you cannot tell me there is one guy in the world, you know, at your college or your school, the handsome guy with the big dick, who's your chad, you know, all that shit, who can compete with a guy like Drake, okay? Let's say Drake isn't famous. Let's say he's never made music, he can't sing, but he's done this in a business entrepreneurial sense. There is no fucking way if he's still got the same life setup and he's doing what he does and he's, he looks the way he does and whatever and he's built the life that he's built, there's no fucking way in hell that some 21-year-old Chad with about £100 in his bank account is competing with that. It's just not possible. I'm telling you guys, like money, success, framing, life setup, all this shit means a hundred times more than being some good looking six foot four guy. I promise you. Now that's not to say that that doesn't help. You know, if you can combine all of that, great. And that's, you know, it, it, in like fucking basic circles, like your little school friendship group, like being six foot four and handsome, yet yeah, it's a weapon, you know, but in the real world at high levels, like you're not going to compete on this sort of scale. Okay, somebody like Drake, the way he's operating, he's moving like the president, getting out of his jet. If you've never watched that video, it's so funny. Just watching him get out of his jet, get in the back of a car, the guy's like, he's got his own driver and whatever. Like, that's, it's crazy to think of how he started to who he's become. And this shit, I, I don't know what it is, guys, but like, this shit gets me so excited about male life. It's almost like a motivational video, this too. I, ju I just get so fucking excited about my own future and what you guys can do and... The, like I know I've said it before, the other side of male life, I probably need to make that video again. I might make part two of that video, but I might do it in reality. I might do it for my own life or I might just, I might go more into scale. I don't know. I'm just going to, I might just like go around the world and actually show you certain experiences and how much better they are than doing other fucking things, you know, and just like, I might, I've got to dig deep into it because the other side of male life, 
it just gets me so excited. It's my that's my actual shit. I fucking love it. It just builds up so much optimism, and I just think about like the possibilities of what could be and who I could be. And like it sounds stupid of me and Hamza to mention him again. We were talking about this recently, about like. He was saying to me, he was like, I don't know if you get this same feeling, but like getting up at 5 a.m. just gets me excited now. Like I get a dopamine rush from just thinking, oh, I'm, I'm getting up early. I'm getting shit done. Like I'm just, I'm building a business. Like I feel, I feel like a boss. I feel like a masculine man. I feel like, you know, he didn't say this bit. This is me saying it, but you just feel like an adult man. Do you know what I mean, guys? You just feel like you're actually putting fucking points on the boards and you're building something better than just, I've slept with 100 girls this, this, do you know what I mean? Like, you're not just building up numbers. It's like, there's substance behind this. There's a foundation behind this. They're, I'm building a proper man. I'm building an empire within my own name. Do you know what I mean, guys? Like, I am a walking brand. Like, I've built something respectable. I've built something that can operate on the, on the highest echelons of society. You know, and high level women are respecting me and everything in my life has gone up a level. Like my cars have improved, my house has improved, the level of wom woman that I'm dating has improved, my holidays have improved, uh, my confidence has improved, my dress sense has improved, you know, the way that people are treating me has improved, like all these sort of things, like my income's improved and I've become a better dad, you know, little things like that, right? And it's just, I think that's what we should base this whole channel on. I think that's what we should all strive for as men because... This, like, you look at Drake in the early days, and yeah, he's still doing this, but he's doing it in a more professional manner. But going to, like, the dorm, dorm rooms, sleeping with college girls, making, like, these kind of tacky songs, and I think they were tacky, and, like, dressing in a tacky way, and, you know, just kind of being fake. And then he's got to this point where he's just built this hyper-masculine character, and you can see how much happier he is. You can see, like, this is brand Drake. And you can see that he's just nailed on with this, okay, guys? So I think this is something that we all need to take into our own lives. We need to focus on building our own hyper-masculine characters, becoming better men, you know, building empires, building brands, building strong foundations and structures and worrying less about all the garbage that surrounds it. And uh, I think Drake's a perfect example of that, guys. So I hope you enjoyed the video, something different. And uh, I probably will do that Other Side of Male Life video very soon, okay, part two. Check out the brand new How to Become a Better Looking Man course by using the links below.